I think the bad rep comes from people who can't have never snatched before in their life who are then made to snatch everything I think that seventy percent of their max. I, th- I think that that is that far and away the the biggest criticism that you have technical movements under load under fatigue mm. for high reps at high weight. For, like for time for time yeah uh, competitively yeah like it's just a it's a recipe <clears throat> for disaster but I have limited sympathy with anyone who gets injured doing CrossFit that is coming into it with even a mediocre level of a training background because I've gone in I have an absolutely awful level of shoulder mobility like it's, it's horrible and I knew that anything overhead that wasn't a press was going to be really really hard for me overhead squats overhead lunges and snatches I knew it was going to hurt. So yesterday, one of the workouts was um, squat snatch and power snatch every minute. Then the workout was 21 reps as part of a three round routine of snatches again. And I didn't mind, I didn't, this is, this is just one of the guys in the gym who's in the mixer in terms of times for most of the workouts, mm. but I did yesterday with an empty bar because I know that it hurts my shoulder and I know that I need to account for that. Um, because they have like a, a scale, don't they? Of if you can't do this, then you can do this instead. But you can always do that. Mm. That's like, I don't know. That's like going into a gym and saying, "Oh well, today my fucking my quads like absolutely on fire." I know that my coach said that I need to go and squat one hundred and two percent max because today's the peak of my strength routine. Mm. But it's it's probably not. A, probably not a fucking good idea. So you have to use some common sense. I suppose anything can be coached badly or performed badly, and if your mm. ego gets in the way, particularly with things like powerlifting, and you you try and go for a, a max on a day where you're feeling grim or um, you you just break your technique to try and squeeze out a few extra kilos then you're going to be the, the problem the problem is the, the problem is that you were given an environment where it's encouraged to work harder yeah. and that when you've got technical movement a lot more can go wrong um, and a lot of the time people don't build up the foundations in in poor gyms but a, you know every single session that I've done so far from the guys who are the absolute beginners to the guys that are intermediate to the guys that are very well developed, the coaches are always saying, does anyone need a scale? Does anyone not understand the movement? Has anyone got any injuries? They're, the guys that are doing it right with regards to CrossFit uh, have been so sown at, but they've been, the they've been sown at such a bad seed from the do CrossFit twice and get rhabdomyolysis. <laughs> like, <laughs> like from, from that like, cliche, that bad coaches have given, he's done a weekend in Carson, California, and now has a level one, and now is teaching people to snap the rotator cuff in half. Mm. Like, because of that, it's almost like they have, they have to compensate now, and they have to be overly protective, which is good, because it does mean that when you get people in who maybe don't know the movements so well, that they're, they're not ever tempted to push too hard. Mm. Well, this is necessary if the franchise is to grow. So, I, so I've, I've seen the, the opposite case, where, exactly as you described, um, one of my old lecturers turned up one day on crutches on her first CrossFit session. She was made to do deficit box jumps and deadlift supersets with 40 kilos, having never lifted before. And she blew out her meniscus. Um, and so she had... So, but obviously that's, that's bad coaching. They've taken someone who's untrained and made them do two quite, quite technically demanding movements. On the flip side of that, she could have said, like, <coughs> by the way... I've never done either that's, of these before. That's why I said I've got limited sympathy for people who have a medium level of lifting yeah. experience. For a complete novice, you don't know you don't know what a deadlift is. Just trust the coach. You also exactly. don't know that that's a, a stressful, difficult Absolutely. combination. So I think that if you've got if you've got enough enough knowledge that you've spent a little bit of time in a gym and you spend a bit of time researching, you know what movements are good for you, and what movements are bad for you, mm. and then you go in and you push yourself too hard and you get injured. If you carry on. <laughs> Should we tell lots of stories about him now he's gone? <laughs> How about the story that mid podcast he just gets up and leaves? That's him gone now. I could lock him out. He's gone home. I could lock him out and then we could say whatever we wanted, edit it and upload it before he. That would be the sort of thing that really pushed his buttons. <laughs> like if he tried to get back in the room because he's left his laptop <laughs> unlocked. Mm. Yes. Resume. What were we saying? What were we saying? <laughs> Technical lift, under load, under fatigue. Yeah, bad. Got it. So, yesterday, <clears throat> I posted something about Joe Wicks. Yes. Saying, did you see it? Yes. Yeah, so... That was funny. 
someone made a great point on that that like is Joe Wicks any worse than these like someone who's been who's like downloaded my fitness pal and suddenly they're a, a, an online coach <laughs> and they're giving someone like high frequency squatting and DUP and like macros to lose weight that's arguably just as bad as a bad CrossFit coach or a powerlifter a powerlifting coach who's giving someone far more than they ever need to progress like yeah they might not be in the gym with them but they're still giving it online mm. someone who's giving someone like macros or calories that are really low mm. in the bodybuilding world well, how, many, really how, many, how many times have we heard stories about someone who's driven clients into the ground in pre-show prep like yeah. you're on 800 calories a day from mm. like 1000 calories a day and like 20 hours of cardio a speaking week. to a client last night that had exactly <clears throat> that problem ended up leaving the coach eventually yeah so everywhere good coaches and bad coaches exist everywhere and I think that it's your job and your, it's not only your job as someone who wants to train, but it's in terms of sort of respect to your own body and your own health. It is your job to do a little bit of research on that before you go away and you book a holiday. You look at the hotel reviews, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like you, I thought you were going to say, like, before you go away and book a holiday, and book a holiday like, find yourself a good coach so that you can get shredded. <laughs> I thought that's where that was going. <laughs> well, <because laughs> it just felt like an odd way to go, but no, no. obviously that wasn't what you were saying, so I'm sorry for laughing. 